my daughter said she wants to come home to have her baby. So, I hope that's all right with you. What? What are you talking about? She wants to come back home to deliver. Where does she plan to give birth? Right here. Pam, my mother-in-law, declared confidently. You know, coming home usually means going back to one's own parents' place. This isn't her childhood home, and it's not my husband's either. I quickly set the record straight with a self-absorbed Pam. My name is Layla, and I'm a 35-year-old office worker. I've been married to my husband, Ryan, for three years. We first met at a mixer. A mutual friend set it up. I hadn't gone to many mixers before, but I was starting to think about settling down. So I decided to give it a shot and went. That's when I ran into Ryan. He looked just as out of place at these mixers, and at first our chat was a little clumsy. But a switch in seating landed us side by side, sparking a more natural conversation. Talking one-on-one -on -one was way easier than in a group, and it felt like Ryan and I really clicked. After the mixer, we headed out for drinks, found a cozy bar, and dove deeper into conversation. We swapped numbers and started hanging out after work, grabbing drinks or dinner. Things went well between us, and before long, we were a couple. Finding a boyfriend at that mixer was a surprise, but I was elated thinking maybe it was destiny. After about a year of dating, we chose to get married. He's a year older and seemed ready for a relationship that would lead to marriage. I was on the same page. So after just a year together, we took the plunge. We met each other's families, celebrated our wedding, and started our journey as a married couple. Life with him was smooth sailing. In fact, it felt incredibly serene, and our shared interests, lifestyles, and values made everything effortless. We both had dependable jobs, so money wasn't a concern. We made loads of memories, like trips, long drives, and fancy dinners for special occasions. Being with my husband always brought joy, and I was constantly laughing. I'm convinced he's my other half. Our married life was pure bliss. Yet, three years in, something's casting a shadow over our happiness. It's the sudden appearance of my mother-in-law, Pam. Hello, Ryan. Layla. Huh? Mom, what are you doing here unannounced? To cut to the chase, can I crash here for a bit? Wait, what? Why? There's this shady guy hanging around my place. Seriously? That's concerning. Have you called the cops? My husband questioned, clearly worried and taken aback. I did, but they told me they couldn't do much unless he does something. That's not comforting. They did say they'd step up patrols in my neighborhood, but... Ever since your dad passed last year, I've been on my own. The thought of any threat while I'm by myself is terrifying. Mom. 
she genuinely looked distressed. No doubt, dealing with a creepy stranger when you're alone is scary. I figure if I lay low for about a month, he might get the hint and leave. A whole month? I was caught off guard. Based on our chat, she planned on bunking with us for a month. That left me a bit dumbfounded. It felt like she wanted to move in. It's challenging to adjust to such a lengthy stay on short notice. But I wouldn't want to live with the guilt if something bad happened to her. Can Ryan and I chat about this for a sec? Of course. I realize this is out of the blue and probably a hassle for you two. Thanks for understanding. Ryan and I headed to our room for a quick discussion. I laid out my thoughts and reservations. He emphasized that he'd rather be safe than sorry and wanted her to stay, if only for a short while, for everyone's peace of mind. Given how strongly he felt, I was on board. We settled on letting Pam stay for a month. Really? Oh, thank you so much. She looked truly appreciative. All right, Mom. Let's grab your things then. No need. I've got everything I'll need right here. Really? Oh, okay. We both raised our eyebrows. It was clear that she had come fully equipped, expecting us to take her in. Well, we'd already agreed to let her stay, so there was no use making a big deal about it. And that's how our temporary living arrangement with Pam got started. Little did we know, this was just the tip of the iceberg. Layla, what the heck is this? Excuse me? Why are you rummaging through my drawers without asking? You shouldn't wear such bold lingerie. It doesn't match your look at all. Come on, Pam. It's not nice to just go into someone's room like that. What? What? I was just trying to help tidy up. Why are you getting all upset over that? I appreciate the gesture, but I'd rather you didn't touch my stuff. It's crucial to set boundaries in these situations. I made my stance clear to her, but she didn't seem to appreciate it. Ryan! Layla was so rude. She just yelled at me. She did? At dinner, she played the victim card, making it seem like I was in the wrong. What actually went down? I was just trying to thank her for letting me stay, so I thought cleaning her room would be nice. But she went off on me telling me not to touch her stuff. You wouldn't believe the look she gave me. Who knew someone so calm could get so mad? Maybe that's what makes it even scarier. She smirked as she spun her version, painting me as if I had some sort of temper issue. Layla, she's claiming this happened. But what's your side of the story? He turned to me, ready to listen. Taking a deep breath, I explained calmly. Yes, I got upset. And yes, I told her to leave my room alone. But that's because she walked into my room without asking and started going through my personal things. Seriously? And then... She had the nerve to comment on my choice of clothing, calling it 
gaudy and out of place. Mom? Did you seriously do that? I was just checking things out. He gave her a sharp look, which clearly made her uncomfortable. Checking what out? For what? I mean, I just... You're just trying to cover for yourself because you're caught. It's clear that Layla's being honest and you're not being straight with us. You can't be doing things like this, Mom. After my husband's scolding, her face turned a bright shade of red. I just... I was only trying to help. Then she pretended to be in tears. Seriously? She was acting like a little kid, crying when things didn't go her way. I hadn't noticed this side of her before. Maybe because I hadn't been around her this much. It's possible her late husband kept these tendencies in check. Or maybe she concealed them, not wanting to upset him. But now, without him around, she was letting loose. Regardless, if she's going to act out and add stress, I can't have her staying here for an entire month. Still, I can't ignore the potential danger at her own home either. I brought up my concerns to my husband. Can we really deal with your mom acting like this for a month? Just the thought of her snooping in my space distracts me from work. And I really don't want to shell out for locks on every tour. I get where you're coming from. I'm genuinely sorry you have to deal with this. He looked very torn. He was stuck between his mother's antics and his concern for her safety. After mulling it over, he proposed an idea. How about we set up a camera in your room? If mom sneaks in, we'll have proof and can call her out on it. Plus, we agree up front that if she trespasses, she goes back to her own place. That should deter her. That might work. It seems like a better plan than doing nothing at all. He offered to handle the camera setup. So, I was on board with the idea. Fast forward a week, and sure enough, Pam was in my room again. She even rifled through my desk drawers and was playing with my jewelry. That was the last straw for both me and my husband. Mom, what's going on here? Why is there a camera in here? We set it up to see if you'd respect our boundaries. I can't believe you'd go this far. You're the one crossing the line. You took my jewelry without asking. I... I was just going to wear it for a bit. Do you think it's okay to just take stuff without permission? It's no big deal. You're overreacting. Mom, come on. This is pretty much stealing. Stealing? You're making it sound so dramatic. You acted in a way that could be called that. Given your breach of trust, it's time for you to head back home. Hold on. I'm sorry. I apologize. Truly. I promise I won't go into your room anymore. I'll put the jewelry back. Just let me stay a little longer. Please. She apologized profusely. We hadn't seen that coming. After a chat, my husband and I decided to give her one more chance. But we made it crystal clear. One more slip-up, and there'd be no more chances. With this understanding, she stayed a tad longer. She had initially said she'd stay a month, half of which was already over, so we were down to just two more weeks. We hoped she'd gotten the message. 
Boy, were we wrong. She took another wild turn. Yeah, yeah, come on over. Can't wait to see you. Pam was excitedly gabbing on the phone. I was curious who was on the other end. When she hung up, I inquired. Who were you chatting with? My daughter Natalie. Oh, Natalie. Turns out she was catching up with my sister-in-law. Pam looked over the moon. And then she said this. Natalie mentioned she's coming home for a while. Just a heads up. Hold on. What do you mean by coming home? She's coming back to deliver her baby. And where does she plan to do that? Right here. She said it as if it was the most natural thing in the world. Usually you'd go to your own parents' place for that. Are you implying she's coming here? When I pressed her, she looked surprised and retorted. Why would I have her in that old place of mine? This apartment is roomy and has extra bedrooms, so Natalie can comfortably stay here. Seriously? I couldn't believe what I was hearing. How could Pam, who was just a guest herself, make such a decision? And she's about to leave in a couple of weeks. Pam, you can't just call the shots like that. Even if Natalie shows up, we're not letting her in. In my words, she shot me a fierce look. How dare you? Who do you think you are? This is Ryan's place, right? You're just living here because of him, and now you're acting all high and mighty. If this is Ryan's place, it's essentially the family home. Such twisted logic wasn't going to cut it. This isn't a family estate, and it's not solely my husband's. I wasn't about to let her irrational claims go unchecked. Just so you're aware, this house is in my name. It is? She scoffed at my declaration. You expect me to believe you could buy a place like this? With my husband still at work, she seemed to think she had the upper hand. Did she assume she could boss me around when it was just the two of us? How presumptuous. Pam, you clearly don't know the first thing about me. I've been with a global company since graduating college, pulling in over $95,000 annually. No way! You're making that up, aren't you? It's the truth. Just ask Ryan. For real? My high salary clearly took her by surprise. Right on cue, my husband came through the door. I overheard you, Mom. I had Layla's phone on speaker, so I caught the whole conversation. You did? Why would you invite my sister here without asking? This isn't your place, and it's not mine either. So it really is Layla's house. Enough. Head back to your place. Are you really suggesting I go back, even if it's not safe? That shady guy you mentioned? We saw someone hovering near your house. But it's clear, they're debt collectors. So you're on the run from debts? Every time we looked into it, the picture became clearer. He confronted her head on, and she went white as a ghost. You're holing up here, because those collectors don't know about this place, huh? I thought it was odd you were always home. I don't know the extent of your debt, but you have an obligation to settle it. You can't stay here expecting us to bail you out. Fill Natalie in on everything. If she tries to come here, she won't be let in. Now it's clear. You're only looking out for yourself. We're done with you. The harshness of his words seemed to break her. No! With tears streaming down her face, she watched in despair as he tossed her bags into the hallway. Time to go. We're not playing games. As her things were thrown out, she hurriedly followed. 
As soon as she was out the door, he locked it behind her. We could still hear her distressed cries, but they eventually trailed off, and she was gone. Later, he briefed his sister Natalie about their mother's debts and the looming collectors. He might have laid it on thick, suggesting that sticking close to their mom could put Natalie in danger too. Natalie took his word for it, distancing herself from Pam and even scrapping her homecoming plans. It seems Pam tried reaching out, but Natalie kept shutting her out, leaving Pam to fend for herself. In the end, Pam ended up back at her place, where the debt collectors caught up with her. They put her to work to pay off her debt. She had always lived beyond her means. Once she got her hands on her late husband's inheritance, her spending spiraled, leading to mountains of debt. However, she only had herself to blame. She needs to face the music and pay back what she owes. We don't want any part in her mess, but we do hope she straightens out her life. Considering her track record, though, that might be a stretch. As for my husband and me, we're living our best lives, cherishing our time together. I'm committed to my career, and together, we're focused on building a future filled with happy memories. <laughs>